Welcome again. I'm Steve Holland with Rapid Tech. I'm an instructor here, and I am going to go through the uh, the uh, Snyder General Furnace, which actually was manufactured by a company called Snyder General, and this is the Arco Air model. Uh, there was a similar model called the Comfort Maker, and they're essentially the same, and this is their GUH model, and it had the RPJ heat exchanger. So let's just go ahead and advance here and take a look at the um, take a look at what I found with this so these are the pictures and for those of you that watch all of these videos uh, what I used to do is I used to show the video then the pictures now I'm showing the pictures and then the video so that you can get a feel of exactly what we're looking at so I switched it up a little bit this is a back view I had the heat exchanger laying down and you can see there are some fractures you know there's a fracture from that rear view here's a you know, a zoomed-in view, and you can see a pretty large fracture there. And then again, there's another one, and then there's a zoomed-in view. And then this is that tube. This is the connecting tube that connects the coupler box. Uh, the, this is the, if you look, this right here is a stainless steel header. That's a secondary heat exchanger. And then this is the tube that runs up, and it does a 90-degree bend and connects the primary heat exchanger. And then it carries, you know, as you know, there's a negative draft, through the vent motor, uh, vent motor assembly, or the draft inducer motor, and that's drawing that negative draft through this secondary, and then drawing it down this tube. So you're pulling all that hot gas off of that primary, pulling it into that secondary, and that's where it condenses. Thus, the name condensing gas furnace. So let's go ahead and take a look here, and I'll go through. I don't know why that keeps doing that. I think I'm getting a little finger happy here, and pushing too many buttons. All right, let's take a look at this GUH real quick. And I'm going to do a, uh, we changed up our audio. We, we had some, we're using a double microphone system prior to this. And it was very difficult because we're using two microphones and recording over two different methods. So we changed it up. And this is the first video where we changed it up to improve that audio. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this. Of course, I have to do voiceover. And there you can see that's the model GUH. And what you're going to see here is there are two furnaces identical that we got access to. And they're parked next to each other. There's the other one. And they're both the exact same size, the exact same model. Now the one I'm showing there, that one on the left, is the one where I found all the problems. The one on the right, which is just off to the right view there, that one I inspected, and I did not find any issues with it, though I did find some pretty, um, some some scorch marks, and uh, chances are there it was soon, it, it wouldn't have been long, and there would have been an issue with that particular furnace. But I'll share with you some of the discoveries I made. So, um, and that picture I'm showing there, that's the coupler box, that little picture that I showed you. Here's a dimple. And we always inspect the dimples on these furnaces. And then there you can see the heavy scorching. And um, so, you know, there's that sides of that heat exchanger. And that's just a clamshell type heat exchanger with that crimp design. And again, I didn't find any issues with that furnace. But when I go over here to the one on the left, I cut the back of it out. Because once I found the problems from the top, I had to show everybody. I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. And I spent about two hours breaking these furnaces down. There's the dimples. Didn't find any problems with the dimples. Um, didn't find, that's some area what you have to watch where that primary connects to that header plate on the front. Check that and make sure you don't see corrosion there and make sure you don't see any fractures or openings. And then that tube, you want to make sure you check that tube and make sure they're pretty solid. That thing was in pretty good shape considering the age of this unit. Now, uh, one of the things, and there's that back header, and there's the tube that, that header, and that's stainless steel. That's what I'm saying in the video is stainless, and that's a stainless secondary fin style with the fins, which is a pretty good secondary, actually. Those, everybody pretty much, everybody's gone to that. Now, there I'm showing some corrosion. There's some corrosion on that pipe that I discovered, and I wanted to catch that. And later on, I investigated that, and I'll show you what I found in the next video here. But I found some corrosion there. So you want to check that. So technicians always check that. If you see corrosion, that's a problem. Should not be any, there shouldn't be any corrosion there. Now as I go in between these cells, um, you'll see 
Um, oh, by the way, there's the hem, and that's the crimped hem. That's how they connect the two clamshells together, or the two pieces of the clam. Make sure you check that. I have seen those fracture. I've seen them fracture wherever they have that little crimp end. I've seen those fracture there, and they're very difficult to see. You know, you, know, you can see how I obviously cut the back of the furnace out with a sawzall. So, you know, obviously you can see it now, but it's not easy. All right, there's one of the fractures. Now, that's a major fracture, okay? That's not just a little, you know, just a little fracture. That thing was busted wide open. And then when I went, that was one cell. And then if you go down from the top, it's not as easy to see. So you got to really be careful uh, because, you know, you guys have evaporator coils sitting on top of these furnaces. You've got all kinds of sheet metal or duckboard obstructions, and that's where I found it. So when I found this one, as severe as it is there, I then proceeded to cut the back of the furnace open, and that's how you got that first view. So watch for those fractures. That's a major fracture. That furnace should not be in operation at all. Likelihood of getting carbon monoxide, monoxide out of that furnace uh, into the airspace is probably slim, but I would never, I would never leave that furnace operate as a tech technician. Absolutely not. No way. That, that thing would have been shut down. And if a customer wanted to turn it back on, well, so be it. I wouldn't recommend it. I usually turn the gas cock and shut that off. All right, so that's that one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one down here. And I just want to show you what I found. Remember I talked about that tube? So now I have the heat exchanger laying on the floor in our studio. And that's our studio there where we film. And I pulled the heat exchanger completely apart because I wanted to see these fractures. And there you are. There's, there's the big crack. Um, that goes, I don't know, that thing's like 10, 12, 13 inches long. But what I discovered, and then I'll just show you this one here too, yeah. Both sides of those cells, look at that, right and left. So technicians, when you see these furnaces, watch, you know, keep a close eye, keep, keep a close eye on this stuff and watch for that. I also discovered, I don't think these, this furnace was having maintenance. I couldn't find any service history records um, on these furnaces with regard, when we get them. Sometimes there's a sticker on the front from the, from the contractor that was working on it, and there are no stickers. But see that tube, those two tubes? Those are the connector tubes that connect that secondary to the primary. The metal one right there, what I'm going to show you is difficult to do because I'm holding a camera in one hand and using my other hand to try to wobble the tube. But what I discovered is, look at the tube is loose. The tube was loose, so that muffler clamp system they use, eventually what happened is from the expansion and contraction, over time it just, you know, think of it, in our climate up in Wisconsin, these things cycle anywhere from five to 7,000 times a season. So it expands, contracts, expands and contracts. Well, eventually that connection wore out. So there's a, there's a reason that we probably ended up with a primary heat exchanger failure. That could be one of the reasons and I'll go through the rest of them. But that's what I found. That tube was actually loose. And that's why I saw the corrosion. So let's go ahead and now let's look at this one up here. And I want to show you what else I found. Totally unrelated to the heat exchanger, but it's great information for service techs out there and for you uh, HVAC instructors at the tech schools who watch a lot of my videos. Um, this is something you want your students to really pay attention to when they see this. I think this might have had something to do with why that heat exchanger fractured as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I pulled the burner set, and there were three burners. This was a 75,000 BTU furnace, and there were three burners. And if you look at how dirty they are, that's a tube-style burner that's just a long tube about, I don't know, I didn't even measure it. It's like 20 inches long that slides from the front, front of the furnace all the way to the back. Now, if you look towards, I get to the front, see that? It's clean. See where the crossover was? It's pretty clean. It's not that dirty. But look what happens as you get further out. The coating on the burner, whatever they made these burners from, started to rust. And these should have been cleaned every year, and they weren't being cleaned. So as you see, look at that, how it's getting plugged. Now think about this. When you're, when you're pushing gas down that tube, the gas is going to take the path of least resistance, and it's going to probably come out the front section of the burner more so than the rear because of the pressure. Well, if you impinge that flame or if that flame starts to slap around in there because it's not evenly being distributed or it's not it's not being it's not evenly distributed along the entire burner, 
that flame could have been smacking around and possibly overheating parts of that heat exchanger, and maybe that's why that, that heat exchanger fractured as bad as it did. So that's something to pay attention to. Watch these burners. Uh, most of the burners on our high-efficient systems today are the in-shot style, little 4-inch, 5-inch long burner, and you're pushing it in so that burner doesn't go down into the, um, into the heat exchanger. So there's three videos on the Model G U H. So what are the possible causes or what happened here? You know, as I tell you guys, I don't know, but but I can, you know, I can guess. So first off, lack of maintenance certainly could have been an issue and played a role in why this furnace failed. Second thing, I don't know if it was overfired or if it was oversized. Um, there's a there's a big problem with oversizing equipment in our country, and it's starting to get better. It's actually improving. Because some of these new furnaces, you get into some of these new high-efficient furnaces that are single-stage or even two-stage, um, they don't like it. They don't like bump and limit. They'll shut down and lock out. Now, the good news is we have modulation today where furnaces will modulate down, so it's pretty difficult to oversize. However, in those bitter cold days under heavy load conditions and those furnaces ramp up, you could have some problems. So that's not an excuse to oversize equipment because it's going to be a modulating furnace. Let's oversize it. That's not a, that's that's just foolishness. I call that HVAC malpractice. All right, so we could have poor design. We certainly could have airflow problems or high static duct pressure. Static duct pressure is a huge problem, and if we're not moving the correct amount of air over those chambers, as you know, we will eventually cause a chamber to fail. Um, we could have had some venting issues. Typically, venting issues don't cause furnace heat exchangers to fail. But when you add it up, so let's say you were, let's just look at a scenario. Let's say you had a furnace with too small of a filter. Maybe the duct works a little undersized. You know, now you've got some venting that's too small. Well, each one of those little pieces um, just adds to the problem. So here, there you have it. That's the Arco Air model GUH. You'll also find it under the Comfort Maker model. And the one thing that, that I can tell you um, as technicians out there, just do the right thing. Let's improve this industry. We have a goal at Rapid Tech and at our Ethos certification program to change this industry one technician at a time. Uh, we, we definitely are doing a good job across the country, but it's my belief that if we're better technicians, higher skilled, um, we're ethical, honest, and, you know, and uh, go out there and serve our customers for the purpose of doing the right thing and, and helping customers save money and and be safe. That's 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 what we're trying to do. So if you need to reach me, you can reach me at ethoskill at gmail.com or you can reach Scott at 866-992-1717. And you can also visit our blog at heatexchangersafety.com, which may be changing. We've got some really cool things happening in 2017. And uh, I think you guys are really going to like it. So that's the uh, model ArcoAir GUH. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video.